So, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And I bid a very good morning to all my students. Okay, to all my wedding planning and management students. So, today we will learn a new topic. Okay, the second topic that is weddings and cultures. Okay, as a wedding planner, okay, the basic thing or the general thing you have to know is the cultural background. Okay, because you are not only okay serve or offering your service to your own race okay sometimes you have to offer your uh, service to all kind of races especially right now one of the most famous trend in wedding is mixed wedding okay that mean mixed culture okay multicultural wedding okay it whether the uh, groom is other kind of races Okay, or the bride is a kind of races. Okay, maybe Chinese. Okay, uh, where they, uh, have a marriage with um, Indian or Indian have a uh, marriage with Malay, something like that. Okay, so because of this kind of things, okay, because of this kind of trend, you have to know some basic thing about cultures and wedding. Okay, so we will go first to our learning outcome today. Okay, so we, ha we have three learning outcome. Okay, so first and foremost is culture, homogeny, and socialization for marriage. Okay, the name is very vast, vast, vast. Okay, but I will teach you after this what is the culture hegemony mean. Okay, so second is mate selection. Okay, so how you want to pick your uh, future bride, future husband, or how you want to pick, because all of these are in my class is girl, so this how you want to pick your future husband. Okay, so learning outcome number three is wedding custom. Or when we talk about wedding custom, we will talk about culture, the uniqueness of every races, okay? So first and foremost, we will go to learning outcome first. That is culture, hegemony, and socialization for marriage. Okay, maybe this is the first time you heard the word hegemony. Okay, so what actually hegemony? What kind of alien is it? Okay, so first and foremost, we will talk about what is hegemony, because if we want to talk about what is culture hegemony, okay, you have to know what is hegemony first. Okay. Just like in the slide, you can read by yourself, okay? Hegemony is related to authority, domination, subjugation, order or control. Okay, this word is very advanced, okay? It's actually how people that are powerful, okay? Trying to conquer people that are not really powerful. Or people that have uh, authority, okay? want to influence the people that do not have the authority okay where the minority are following the majority okay so i will explain more okay hegemony is a term by a marxist okay marxist is marxist theory actually uh come from karl marx okay one of the famous scholar that talk about capitalism capitalism is all about money 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 Okay, so if you go to a degree level after we, after this, maybe you will hear the Karl Marx theory or people known as Marxist theory. Okay, Karl Marx theory used by Antonio Gramsci, also a researcher, described hegemony as a dominant, most powerful class and get control over an idea or opinion. Okay, is in a family, hegemony is actually the act where your father and your mother actually influence your decision. For example, my father said that, Irfan, you have to go to university. That is all the people in the world go. You have to go to university. That is the example of hegemony, where there are powerful people are influencing decision by non-powerful people. That is son and father, okay? So hegemony is a maintenance of social order that created 
with authority and control. Okay, so it's actually how an authority want to control the social order by making a decision. Okay, so it's actually a ruling class where a ruling class means the authority are manipulating the decision by the people that are not powerful. Just like uh, when you say, okay, boba tea is not really good for your health. Okay, but why people still buy it? Why people still consume it? Why people still like it? Okay, because majority of people, okay, majority of people are saying that boba tea is good. Okay, so you are being influenced by the powerful people because of majority, you want to uh, conquer the minority. That is hegemony. So how about the cultural hegemony? Okay, so how cultural hegemony is focused on how power is being used and potentially abused. Okay, potentially abused. Okay, so this hegemony is very famous use in cultural sentiment, cultural aspect. Okay, so how this cultural hegemony, okay, how people have been influenced by a majority decision, okay? So first and foremost, okay, cultural hegemony, so it's, uh, we're actually still talking about cultural hegemony, okay? Cultural hegemony explains the relationship between the culture and power of ruling people or the most dominant people, okay? Just like I said before, in the hegemony, okay, the powerful people, the majority people have the most power so that it is also being applic applicable in culture. Okay, for example, okay, for example, if before this, okay, before this, bride are usually using their traditional attire to go for marriage, to go for wedding reception, but because of this cultural hegemony, okay? Bright nowadays prefer to wear white gown, okay? When you see in the, when, when you see in the movie, when you see uh, there are royal wedding, when you see all kind of wedding, they are very grand and expensive and popular, extravagant, okay? They will never wear their traditional attire. The main attire that they will show is the white gown. Why? Why white gown is so popular although they are not our culture? Because majority of people are using white gown when they are going for wedding. Okay, this kind of thing is known as cultural hegemony. Okay, where majority of people that are using wedding gown influence the minority of people that are cultural people, for example, Chinese, Malay, and also Indian, are also being influenced by the decision that by the majority of people that are using the white gown. Okay, the white gown actually dress. Okay, if you you do not know what is white gown, white gown is the gown, the white gown or white dress that you use in wedding. Okay. So to be precise or to summarize about the cultural hegemony, okay, it's actually a decision by a population to the general direction. Okay, this is the general rule that you have to show, uh, to go for, or you have to taat kepada this kind of rule because there are a big population that saying that this is the rule. You have to wear you 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 have to wear white gown when you wedding. But actually, it's not. Okay, some of the traditional kind of wedding also still using their traditional wedding. Okay, but people or uh, all the society will say that oh, we'll be waiting for the white gown because white gown is the center of the wedding. Okay, that kind of thing is known as cultural hegemony. Okay. So, mat selection, okay, this is the way how you want to pick your husband, how you want to pick your future mate, okay, how you want to pick your future soulmate, okay. So, there are actually three ways how you want to pick your future husband, your future mate, okay. There are three that is mat selection by capture, mat selection by arrangement, mat selection by choice. 
choice choice okay so first and foremost okay we will talk about map selection by capture this kind of thing actually very sensitive okay because yes it's still being used or it's still being practiced until right now but actually this is illegal okay this kind of culture is done in kazakhstan okay the idea where the woman being abducted into marriage okay and actually the woman do not really want to get married if without discussion if this is because of the custom sometime custom is culture okay so this kind of culture is known as alu kachu okay alu kachu okay which means grab and run okay where you are grabbing someone uh, maybe it's more about girl because girl are more vulnerable girl are weaker something like that it's not like weaker and weaker because it's easily to be captured okay an illegal and violent custom in kazakhstan located in central asia okay kazakhstan lawmaker have been increased okay before this they are not really uh, have a very tight or a very good uh, rules about this but they have increased the three years to 10 years maximum jail for bridal kidnapping since 2012 okay it's good that they have the enforcement of law about this kind of thing because this kind of thing is very sensitive okay you don't want to be captured and suddenly you are getting married to people uh, to someone that you do not really know okay and also this man selection by capture you can see in youtube and you can watch in youtube how this girl is actually girl it's not really woman actually being captured and forced to get married because of money okay so second is met selection by arrangement or uh people say that ka kawin kawin plan kawin rancang kawin yang okay this kind of thing is very famous in malay actually okay sometimes uh you are being arranged okay to someone that you do not really know and it being selected by maybe your parents your grandparents and very famous in korean movie okay korean movie okay so this form of mad selection was historically enacted for economic reason okay it's not really it's not really okay you want you have to marry this kind of thing because this girl this boy having a very big company the kind of thing okay in the korean movie actually always do something like this okay to preserve the bloodliness or to advance the political agenda okay to preserve the bloodliness actually this kind of thing happen for if you go to malay kind of tradition okay you know that some of the people have the awang name dayang name shed name and sharifah name in the beginning of their name okay for example is uh, your previous lecturer dayang azwa okay you can see also uh, the name of Sheikh Sadiq. Okay, the people of this name actually the keturunan of royal, the royal blood. Okay, if in Sarawak people say that Awang and Dayang, so if the woman is Wa Dayang, okay, you have to marry with Awang, okay, because to preserve the bloodliness. Okay, how about Sheikh S Y E D Sheikh Sadiq? okay the name start with shed they have to marriage with sharifa okay to preserve the bloodliness okay so and to advance the political agenda okay this kind of thing happened in um, malacca actually okay if you ever uh, read a historical book there are one princess from china that is princess putri hang lipo okay Putri Hang Lipo. It's not Chen Lempo. Okay? It's Putri Hang Lipo. Putri Hang Lipo being uh, married with Sultan Melaka because they want to have a political agenda. Okay? It's still common in Japan, in India, and in, in India, 95 marriage are arranged. 95% marriage are arranged. 
Can you plan that if you go to India right now? Okay, maybe you will be arranged by your parents. Okay, your grandparents. Okay, something like that. Okay, in rural area, girls are seldom given NC. Okay, and actually, this match selection by arrangement. Okay, it's not really being sometimes. Sometimes it's not being agreed by both people or both party. Okay, and last but not least is match selection by choice. Okay. This kind of thing is very famous, and right now because ah uh, we are going for a modern kind of trend, this kind of thing is very famous. Okay, individual select its suitable partner based on their own device or based on their own preference. Okay, maybe because of the social oh social ah uh, the ah uh, the boy is very handsome, just like the Korean something like that. Biological chemical, okay, maybe because of the boy or girls are bau very wangi, and you have to know that smell also. Some of people love to smell something very nice and unique smell. Some of the people also emit a very unique smell, and because of this kind of smell, seventy percent will people will have a relationship because of smell, okay. Surprisingly, okay, an anthropological cue will influence the selection. Okay, anthropological cue is about how we like. Okay, maybe some of the people love ah the rich man, the rich woman, someone who are very ah sederhana, very ah know how to do work, very hard working. Okay, there are factor of selection, educational background, occupational. Okay, all kind of thing is being selected by you yourself, the one who get. Marriage, okay. It's not being forced. It's not being arranged, okay. So last but not least, we will talk about wedding custom, okay. This kind of thing is very important, okay, because we will talk about every wedding custom in Malaysia and also in modern, okay. I will list four actually: four Malaysia, Indian, Chinese, and also modern. I think modern also, okay. So first and foremost, ah, we will talk about first custom that is dowry and bride price. Okay, this kind of thing is a very common for Malay wedding and also Chinese wedding. But I'm do not really sure for Indian wedding that is dowry and bird bride price. Okay, if in Malay people call it sebagai hantaran. Okay, hantaran. Okay, custom number two is the wedding costume itself. Okay, because you are a wedding planner, sometimes wedding planner have their own gown, have their own custom made costume for the wedding and for the bride and groom. Okay, and last but not least, custom number three is wedding shower or people stay bride shower or bridal shower. Okay, all the thing is the same. Okay, so first and foremost, we will talk about dowry and bride price. Okay, Malay people know it as duit hantaran or hantaran. Okay, so dowry known as obligation. Okay, in form of money or possession paid by the groom to the bride. Okay, is actually paid by a groom to a bride. Okay, this is the common thing. Okay, the general things. Okay, usually. Groom pay something or give something to the bride. For example, money in the term of money, in the term of possession, in the term of ah uh, maybe object. Okay, LV bag. Okay, the ticket go to honeymoon. Ah, uh, ticket to go to ah uh, Australia maybe. Okay, so the dowry is often money. Okay, is actually often money. Money. Okay. It also can be anything agreed by the bride. For example, jewelry, home goods, furniture, and some that are very rich people will give house, people will give land. Okay, that is kind of dowry or bride price. Okay, so dowry and bride price practice are still common in some religion and also country. For example, in Islam, we call it as mahar. Okay, mahar. Okay, mahar. Okay, mahar. Okay, in Chinese people call it pinjin. Okay, or known as bride price, and also ah uh, dowry are known as dos in Rome. Okay, 
and one of the main goal of dori why why people have to do dori okay actually is woman is uh, have their own price or when we are go wedding we want to buy the woman no 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 okay it's actually a form of protection for women we want to protect the woman okay by a very possibility that mistreatment by the husband or the family because some when you are getting married okay is actually the husband responsible to take care of you and you yourself have to take care of yourself you do not really need to only depend on your husband you as a woman do not depend on a guy okay i'm a very feminist okay because for me a woman have to know how to defend yourself have to know how to be dependable and have to know and do not depend on any kind of guy because sometimes guy are trash okay so you have to know that okay so the, how, this dory what is the main role of dory you want to protection okay when you are being protected because you have money right now okay people give your money because people give your jewelry okay you can spend it okay if there are happen something happen for example bercerai okay you are being divorced okay so where the money that you want to use your dory your bride price okay that is the thing okay so the wedding costume we will talk about wedding costume okay wedding costume is actually very very unique okay all the costume and all the culture have their own style and also importance okay so you cannot say that oh uh, you can use dress uh, by using baju kurung no 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 some of the costume have their own symbolic okay symbolic okay so you can see indian how the costume look like chinese okay this is the mainland chinese okay and also malay okay malay you always see i think okay baju kurung baju melayu okay but first and foremost we'll talk about the modern culture okay so in the modern culture one of the famous thing is white gown okay white gown just that i said before also related to the cultural hegemony okay so who are the one who popularize popularize this kind of white gown okay it's been popular by queen victoria okay so you have to know that in order to create a white gown that are very clean is very expensive dulu lah dulu in the past in the past white gown because white gown you you need you you have to take care of the cleanliness of the white gown okay so it is very expensive and the only people that can manage to buy the white kind of cloth is royal okay so one thing because of this kind of royal have setting the trend about white gown okay people will go for the queen choice okay why queen chose white we have to we, have, we also have to go for the trend that is being choice by being selected by the queen the queen itself okay the one who are powerful okay so they assume that the white color was intended to symbolize virginity okay you are being white okay white is a virginity virginity mean uh you are not being married before lah i mean virginity okay so second is chinese culture okay the men just like normal chinese thing color maybe red okay because red is the traditional and sacred color okay so one of the must okay it's necessary to include when you are um go for um chinese wedding is actually covering veil that is a piece of square shaped red color silk silk okay sutra usually embroidered with phoenix pattern okay phoenix pattern and one of the most classic accessory actually is phoenix crown okay so you can see that most of the chinese kind of wedding have their own crown okay this thing is not as crown okay you can see this kind of thing is not as crown is actually the phoenix crown okay one of the honorable ornament or accessory 
for ancient women. Okay, this kind of crown is originated by a queen actually. Okay, a queen in China. Okay, the queen, the only one who are powerful are the one who wear the crown of phoenix. Okay, so because the wife is always the one who powerful have the power in a marriage, therefore they wear the crown. Okay, of the phoenix. Okay, to symbolize the power. Okay, in the Malay culture. Okay, in the Malay culture, very easy traditional Malay attire. Baju kurung, baju uh, Melayu. But kebaya also you can use. Kebaya is also one of the famous, okay, uh, traditional attire in Malay, okay. And actually, okay, if you want to go for maybe a popular or extravagant kind of cloth, okay, we go for songket, okay. Songket is very expensive, actually. The hand woven fabric embroidery with golden thread, okay, very expensive. If you want to go for original kind of song cat, okay, one meter, one meter, one meter actually is two hundred and something, only one meter, okay. So it's all about the quality of the song cat, okay. I have buy a song cat from Terengganu that is eight hundred ringgit, okay, and very beautiful, white in color, okay. So the bright palm, okay, the you can see in the bright palm. Okay, the bride, only bride, huh? only bride. You cannot, the groom cannot have this inai. Okay, using dry from henna, leave to signify fertility and love. Okay, so if you see in the wo in the Malay woman hen, there are actually a henna. Henna in Malay is called inai. Okay, to signify fertility and love. Okay, for men, tanja is commonly made commonly made from a type of woven woven silk fabric okay and also they have they must have a keris okay this kind of thing is not keris okay so this kind of thing also known as tanja okay this is known as tanja okay every state have their own tanja okay so last but not least is indian culture okay so how about indian culture indian culture the bride wear a wedding sari okay wedding sari or lehenga okay lehenga according to the region okay red is considered to be most auspicious color among the hindu red is the best color okay for groom Okay, how about for groom? Groom is kurta or shirt that may be wore or something anga vastram may be used to cover the chest. Okay, so anga vastram actually something like this. Okay, on the first picture, okay, anga vastram that is okay. I'm so sorry because uh, there are something happened. Just now. Okay, so last but not least is wedding shower. Okay, wedding shower is a bridal shower. Okay, it's an anticipated pre wedding ritual. Okay, it's actually often held one more, one week. Okay, so how about now? Can you hear my voice? Because the internet in the college is not really stable. Okay, so after this, I will change the Wi-Fi. Okay, so you have to know about wedding shower. Okay, wedding shower is actually, it's not really cultural thing. Okay, it's actually something that cultural hegemony. Okay, because our uh, majority people that use or seem to be practicing this kind of culture, okay, many people are also being influenced and also do, do this kind of wedding shower, okay. So, I think uh, wedding shower, actually, there are no religious or cultural things happen. And actually, it's more about food and games, okay. So, I think that's all from me, okay. Thank you so much for your participation. Okay, so do you have any question? So if you have any question, you can just ask in the group. Okay.